Hi guys, I'm Wiley. And I'm Trin. And we're back today with some guests from ACTEC. Go ahead and introduce yourself, you guys. I'm Sarah Enright. I'm a senior, and this is my second year doing ACTEC. I'm Kara Brown. I'm a junior, and this is my first year in ACTEC. Awesome, awesome. Can you guys tell us a little about a little bit about what you guys do in ACTEC and what, what it's about? Whenever I try and describe ACTEC to someone who's never heard of it before, I kind of describe it as a competition in studying, um, which sounds very nerdy, which it <laughs> is. Um, it's basically you get an overarching theme for the year. So this year's theme was water, and you have to compete in 10 different subjects about that are all revolving around that theme. Yeah, and we spend a lot of time going through um, materials provided by Academic Decathlon and then also using the materials to study like art pieces and literature pieces and also like math problems and science concepts. Wow, that's really cool. Um, How did you guys uh, hear about and get involved in ACTEC? A few of my friends have been doing Academic Decathlon the year before. I joined, but they weren't doing it competitively. And then I also had a student come in and talk about ACTEC, and I was really interested in it because it was a weighted fine art, and it's the only weighted fine art. So that's what really drew me in. Yeah. Um, and then when I was in middle school, I was also kind of on a competitive, like, academic team called National Academic League, and it was kind of like a little precursor to Academic Decathlon. And so then I think. Act Deck was kind of a continuation of that same environment. Okay, cool. That's so cool. Um, how do you guys prepare for these competitions? So I think there's like a lot of reading and studying involved, That's similar to most of the class time. But when I'm getting ready for a competition, it's really important to like do practice questions about the subject material and like reread the materials that I'm unsure about and then like talk to the people who are on my team Mm -hmm. because I think some of us know some sections or some subjects better so it's always nice to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah for context as to how much reading we're doing uh, there are seven different packets that we read oh my god which are about a hundred pages each oh and then there's also a separate book that we read outside of that which you are supposed to reread and typically you want to read each packet at least twice I would say before competition Uh, so it's a lot of reading and then I know personally I did a lot of practice quizzes as well Mm -hmm. and then we tried to meet every Monday and Friday before state um, all of our team just to study together and talk about any questions we had okay cool wow that sounds so intense oh my goodness <laughs> yeah. yeah um so what are some competitions coming up that we can really look forward to so we actually just finished our competition season for the oh, year Oh, all right uh, there's debate about whether or not we're going to nationals because a lot of our team has conflicting things but the main competition season which was state is over yes. awesome mm-hmm. how did you guys do in state So we actually did kind of unprecedentedly well this year. We placed second at state out of all the teams, um, which was a really big improvement from last year. Last year, the Red Mountain team placed ninth at state. So, and we also won most improved out of the state teams that were competing. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. You guys are doing awesome. (laughs) Um, Would you guys recommend um, academic decathlon to other people? Yeah, for sure. I think that beyond the fact that Academic Decathlon is a weighted fine art credit, it's also a really great environment. Like, I think it's very academically focused. And ACTEC, like, the reading and the studying that I have to do in ACTEC has really well prepared me for, like, time management when I'm Mm -hmm. taking tests and also just, like, being able to do critical reading because when you have that much material to absorb and study – you really kind of learn like what information you have to Mm -hmm. focus on and how to read large amounts of Mm -hmm. like subject matter Mm -hmm. and learn what really matters which is super important for like AP tests Mm -hmm. yeah I would also say that during ACTIC I get to learn about a lot of topics that I otherwise wouldn't spend time towards so this year I got to learn about marine biology and then last year I remember I learned astronomy and then I also got really invested in art history, which I never liked art before ACTEC. Like I was, <laughs> I hated art. I'm very much like a STEM girl. But then I 
just got first in art in the oh, state, nice. which was very random. Yeah, but well, it, good you, can, job. <laughs> you get new you get new interests basically. Yeah, is what I'd say. that's yeah. so cool. Um, um, what are some like tips? Because you guys read a lot of stuff. Like, how do you guys like take it all in without having to like read it thirty times? <laughs> I think that's really kind of a hard question to answer so I, I think we kind of have differing strategies mm -hmm. because my strategy is usually to like I read at a pretty leisurely pace for most of the season and then right before competition I do kind of like speed reading and that helps me absorb a lot of the numbers and the names that we have to like mm -hmm. I'd say like memorize mm -hmm. um, but yeah I would say that you kind of do have to read it a lot. I The way I approached it is I would first usually read a packet at a much slower pace and take notes on it. And then I, right before competition season, you would just kind of reread everything because other because sometimes they'll ask very obscure questions. There will be a question about yeah this random like place that is mentioned in one line of your packet and you're supposed to know the answer. Oh my goodness. And so it's just, you kind of do have to do a lot of that. I also remember right before testing, I did a lot of quizzes because I felt like quizzes were much easier for me to get and digest new information and also see where I really needed to improve on. Mm -hmm. Because for instance, like I saw that I was already doing well and so say our math, so I wouldn't focus more attention to it. Wow. Oh, my goodness. These competitions have to be nerve-wracking. You guys have, like, a little routine you do to, like, <laughs> mentally prepare yourself for these? Um, so there are kind of two parts to the competition. There's both the subjective events, which are, like, events that are judged by humans, and then the <laughs> objective events, which are the multiple choice tests. Mm -hmm. So for the subjective portion of the competition, which consists of the essay, the interview, and the speech – there are kind of routines that you can do, like, obviously, we go over the speeches that we write many, many times because we want to be able to perform them to our judges with kind of as little bit, little reading mm -hmm. through our speeches as possible. So I basically memorized my four-minute speech. Whoa, wow. That way I could perform it without having to look down. And then for essay, um, which gets sent in ahead of time, we read over the subject's that we thought they were going to give us on the prompt. So we get three essay prompts based off of three of the different packets. It happened to be at State that we got a literature prompt and a history prompt. And an art prompt. And an art prompt. So we read over a lot of subject matter in preparation for that. Mm -hmm. And also, it's kind of like a timed write mm -hmm. in an oh, AP class. Yeah. <laughs> you get an hour to write it. Oh. Um, so preparing for subject events is a lot like mm -hmm. prepping for a test yeah. and then... For objective events, we already kind of talked about how you study to prepare for material, but to de-stress, I think we're really lucky as a team to have teammates that are pretty, like, good friends and have a good rapport. Mm -hmm. I know, at least even last year, we were in the waiting room for our interview and speech, and we were talking, and the uh, the judges or the hosts of the competition were very happy that we were you know, friends, which is Aww. not always <laughs> typical of a academic decathlon team. So just kind of like we'll chat about both subject, like matters relating to act deck and out also outside topics just to kind of de-stress so that you feel in your element before you take a test. Yeah. 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 So these are absolutely crazy, like competitions that you guys have to go to. Have you ever encountered like any roadblocks in like studying for it or like mid competition? I think so. One of the um, roadblocks that I encountered this year was that most of our or the both of our official competitions this year were virtual they were online oh wow and so that sometimes creates problem technical technical mm, difficulties yeah. so during my speech this year at the regional competition my timer that was in the room stopped working and oh, no. you get timing penalties if you run over or under your time. And you have a 30-second window in which your speech is supposed to end. Mm -hmm. And my judges can't speak during my speech. So I had to improvise my speech because I didn't know oh, when the timer goodness. was going to end. So that was kind of the craziest like difficulty that I experienced actually during the competition. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they had to like let me off without a timing penalty because my timer didn't work. But it was... I had to improvise the end of my speech. It was crazy. I would also say trying to balance act with other schoolwork or even just life. I know you were, Carrie, you were not in town for the week before 
the state competition, which is kind of stressful. And then also, I remember last year when I was at states, I was like, I had a stomach flu. So that oh, was no. not fun. I'd be in the middle of the test and be like, I'm about to throw up. But you know what? I persevered. It worked out. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. That's amazing. Um, what are some like good things that have happened? Like instead of roadblocks, like what are some uh, like insanely amazing things that have just happened? Yeah. So I think like Sarah mentioned, the material that Academic Decathlon gives you is like very, it's varied a lot and it covers a lot of subject matter, which allows you to read about things that you never would pick up on your own. So the like literature pieces that they give you and the art pieces that they give you, it makes for some really interesting like topics of conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think that like the subject matter that we've been able to talk about this year has made for some really interesting conversations in the class. And like being able to talk about like the crazy composers of the music pieces or like the backstories behind any of the art pieces has been like really interesting because we never would have otherwise studied like 17th century Asian, East Asian (laughs) ink wash painting. (laughs) (laughs) If we had not been if it had not been chosen oh, yeah. for our materials. One of my favorite things that I've ever learned in life came from ACTEC, and it was this piece called Watson and the Shark. It's an art piece of this um, this man commissioned or like essentially paid this artist, John Singleton Copley, to make this art piece of the time that his leg was bitten off by a shark. Um, and Interesting. It's, it's just crazy. There's so many crazy things. I remember... And it's hanging in a children's hospital. Oh, it's yeah. Like he paid for it An to orphan's be. hospital. What? An orphan's hospital. Uh, so that's... That, I, wow. Okay. But we never would have learned about it if we hadn't had the chance <laughs> to yeah. study it. Uh-huh. So, so that's crazy. So uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for yeah. our interview. Thank you guys so much. That was so informational. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. All right. And uh, now we're on to announcements. Come help college-bound AZ with their upcoming Chicago West Festival at the Mesa Convention Center on Saturday, March 19th. Various duties will be available in four-hour shifts. See Mrs. Bianchi in counseling for more information. Please be aware that we have two types of dogs on our campus, service and therapy. We have Lewis, a service dog. She is strictly here for her handler and is not to be interacted with. This means no petting. We also have two therapy dogs, Buster and Anakin. These dogs are here to be pet and interacted with. Great news, JROTC is now offering dual enrollment credits for students who complete four years. Students can earn college credit towards a certificate in organizational leadership through MCC. Interested in the military? We can help you get a rank up in any branch of service. Stop by the JROTC building or email Major Cortez at olcortez at mpsaz.org and ask us how. Attention class of 2024 and 2025 students, MCC and Mesa Public Schools are offering the Early College Academy an amazing opportunity to earn up to 34 college credits while also earning high school credits at the same time. MCC will be holding two information sessions on March 24th, one in person and one virtual. Visit the above link for details. You are also welcome to see Ms. Sweet in counseling with any question. The Native American Club offers a friendly social circle for students to learn about Native Indigenous cultures as well as to educate the school community at large. Club meetings are every Thursday during fifth lunch in Mrs. Carol Patkins' room 242. Students with fourth lunch see Ms. K in room 242 or Ms. Carl in room 240 for a pass. Are you interested in different cultures? Do you like sampling foods from various ethnic cuisines? Do you enjoy learning about cultural holidays, traditions, mythology, and customs? Do you dream of international travel? If so, the Cultural Ambassadors Club is a club for you. Club meetings are every Thursday from 3.30 to 4.30 in Miss Curl Patkins' room 242. See you there. Interested in politics, social activism? Junior States of America is for you. Come meet fellow passionate students who are looking to make a difference in the world around us. Our group is nonpartisan and focused on restoring civil discourse. All viewpoints are welcome. We meet every Thursday in room 6 to... Thir- si- <sighs> 613 after school. (laughs) Thank you. See you there. Girl Up meets this Wednesday right after 7th period in room 244. Bring your lunch and help make a positive change for girls around the world. All right. And for our last announcement, we have the Decades Dance this weekend on March 19th at 7 p.m. And the dance is in the main gym and there are going to be photo booths in the small gym. And you can buy your tickets for the dance with the link... um, in the RMHS NHS Instagram page. It's in their bio. And I think you can purchase them on GoFan. And the promo code is your student ID. 
Awesome sauce. Yeah, that's why we have a spirit week this week. Just a reminder, Monday is uh, 1960s, tie-dye. Tuesdays is the 1970s, which is funky flares. Wednesday is 1980s, let's get physical. Thursdays is 1990s, smells like teen spirit. And Friday is 2000s. She doesn't even go here. All right, that's all for the announcements (laughs) for today, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.